Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. Now understand on the channel over the last couple of days there have been a lot of premium tanks, sometimes spamming gold, sometimes uh, hitting experience record. Today I'm going to have none of those luxuries as I'm playing on my Plays for Free account, an entirely separate account to my main account which I started in 2018 which I never spend any money on and never play with any premium consumables. Accordingly, it makes the battles a lot more challenging and sometimes you have to use other tactics and not just use your your brute power of your vehicle which is sometimes less competitive than enemy tanks to be able to to win the game and today's going to be a very interesting one because this is going to be a video that's dedicated to all of you light tank lovers out there especially you light tank lovers out there who have to deal with being berated by your team you know, the, the kind of teammates who are kind of noob light scout now. And how hard it is sometimes to have to just ignore all of that, bury it all down inside you, and just realize that, mate, I probably know what I'm doing more than you do. I'm playing the light tank. How about you be quiet and you let me carry? So I'm playing in the 5916 today. This is the tier 6 Chinese light tank. And I don't even have the top engine on this vehicle. So if you're wondering, wow, oh, this thing looks a little slow. Yeah, um, I play stock tanks on my free-to-play account, like I used to back in the day. Sometimes I even play tanks completely stock without getting any of the modules on them right at the beginning and play all the way through. And it definitely means that my win ratio whenever I'm playing my stock tanks on my free-to-play account goes down. In fact, the account has dipped below 59.5% win ratio recently because I've been playing so many stock vehicles and there haven't been any mission marathons to grind, so I haven't just been slamming premium tanks, which of course makes the overall win ratio on the account go up. So you should realize that climbs and, and dips in your win ratio quite often come down to the kinds of vehicles that you're playing and also um, come down to uh, the, the state that they're in. And in this case, playing those stock tanks or, nah, I've got the top gun on the 5916, so it's not like I can call it stock. But not having the top engine will definitely impact the kind of plays that you can make. And it's all about trying to adjust what you're trying to achieve in the battle and your level. Of course, I'm in a bit of a weird predicament that I'm kind of jumping onto accounts, but at least for you, once you've managed to get your vehicle all set up and got all the field mods and got a great crew, you know how it's going to perform and you can become more confident. What I'm trying to suggest is that for any of you out there who kind of worry about your performance when you're playing stock tanks, don't worry too much. So here it comes. Noob light move. Spotter spot, please. Well, I'm up to 1,500 assistants so far. I've baited multiple heavy tanks into coming into that window. I'm lighting up the CC-56 and the AMX-12T. I'm really not sure what more the team wants from a bottom tier light tank in this kind of a scenario. It's very important that I hold this position for as long as I possibly can, and there's no pressure on me to go in and interrupt the, the super chaffy, I presume, that's inside the cap circle. The VZ-44-1 is holding on to dear, for dear life against an onslaught of four vehicles. But in this kind of a scenario, if we, manage to, if we manage to spot the enemy team, then hopefully some of the tank destroyers that are berating us back there will manage to get some of those shots in. Okay, so the Super Chaffee were just spotted down there, which means that it's actually a tiger that must be in the cap circle. The Super Chaffee finally manages to proxy spot me. I'm kind of worried about the OI. And I realize that, yeah, the pressure on the cap is significant now, and I feel like I have to do something for the team. And even with this stock engine, I, oh, I feel so slow right now. I gotta go in, I gotta try and get the interrupt on this tiger. And now, having successfully interrupted the Tier 7 German Heavy Tank, we can hopefully go after the Super Chaffee. Don't want to ram a Chaffee in this scenario. I'm not really sure if that would be a good trade. Not only for the hit points that I would that I would likely lose, but also for the fact that I would then sit in front of the gun line that's above. I've been using this, this dried up river bed on El Halouf. I nearly called this map Sand River after saying that. Uh, to great effect recently with being able to escape. I love contesting the vision in that location. It can have great results as we're already seeing. But don't be afraid of actually trying to snake your way out down the dried up river bed on El Halouf. It can end up being very effective. It was just yesterday I was playing a game in a Progetto which I ended up hard carrying. Much in this similar way by managing to sneak out 
in that way. Although, I also admit that there was a game in the Progetto where I think I rushed across thinking that I could be able to... to get some frags on my opponent. But I actually ended up throwing the game and getting completely caught. So, uh, I've got to accept that as well. So, I'm not saying that it's an easy way out, but sometimes you've got to make the best of a bad situation. And that's exactly what we did there. So, having now dealt with the enemy's advance, we're up by one tank, which is nice, but we're down by 1,600 hit points. Well, we're no longer up by a tank, but we're down by 1,600 hit points, which can be a little bit brutal, especially considering that the enemy still have that top tier heavy, although it did look like it was a bit of a stock tiger in the form of that in the center of this map. So I'm playing with Izakis, who's playing in their T-3485M, and they are not showing any fear right now of driving down to go after this Tiger, even though there's a variety of vehicles that might be up above on the ridge line that could snipe down on them. However, we're going to be a little bit sneaky. I'm going to get to the side of the Tiger, and we're going to try and help out Izakis here. So we come around the corner, we're going to put a round right through the front of the Tiger, doesn't reset any of the cap points, I guess because maybe the artillery reset the uh, cap points just before we managed to get them. And I'm not sure if that tiger is actually stock. It's got 1,620 hit points, which means they're definitely using a durability module. So maybe they are fully upgraded and they just don't have the durability module inside the first slot. Maybe they're putting vents in there and then they've got the durability, something like that. That would probably be the 8%, right? So it doesn't actually look like that Tiger is stock, so we've got to be careful here. And it's always so hard when you're playing in a light tank with low alpha damage when you're trying to engage something that will hit you so unbelievably hard indeed. So the Tiger takes a while to get their gun on target, doesn't quite manage to find me. And yeah, I don't want to take that 280 alpha damage. And this scenario, it's just tricky. What am I going to do? I have to shoot the player another five or six times to be able to finish them off. Luckily, there's a Basoto. Was this the one that was berating me earlier? Possibly that is also distracting the tiger from above. So I, I guess the uh, the noob light move, spot to go spot, uh, is, is now forgotten uh, as we're kind of teaming up to try and take down this game. So luckily for me, the tiger's trying to avoid shots from the Pesoto and they're wedging their vehicle up, which means that they are in an awkward scenario where they don't have enough gun elevation. And even though this artillery is shaving off a lot of my hit points, which I would like to maintain to carry the rest of this battle, uh, we we get rid of the Tiger in the cap, which removes a lot of the vision. It makes the T-3485M safe, and it allows us a little bit more room to hopefully get around the map and be able to start to isolate and assassinate our opponents. So one of the worst things definitely about being on the free-to-play account and the lack of premium consumables is that I quite often... What is that artillery doing in the cap circle? Okay, just whatever. I, th I don't think you should be there. I think you should be back, maybe up in the hills as I'm clicking up there on the west as we can see the A3 area. And then maybe try and actually shoot for my spots. I'm going to tell this Basoto, which was, I not the, not believe the one that was berating me, uh, that I'm going to help them here against the AMX-12-2 who's trying to sneak in for an assassination against the Italian tank destroyer. So here we go. Aiming, 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 aiming. Confirmed kill. Great stuff. That's one autoloader out of this game. And there are no autoloaders left on the battlefield. I'm going to be the bigger man and I'm saying that I'm going to help this Pesoto who was like noob light move because, you know, I'm here to I'm here to win this battle. But unfortunately, I don't have time for that right now because there's a Stritzvang 74 who's making their way towards the middle of this map. Is QB ever going to finish what he was saying about uh, free to play account and why it's tricky? Yes, I will. The lack of the premium consumable massively impacts my view range. And so that stops me from using coated optics. But oh dear. Um, whoops. Uh, well, yeah, I might be a noob, noob light, spot please spot, but uh, unfortunately for you, mate, yeah, that was uh, a little bit of a fail as you, you fell off a cliff, albeit that you were forced to because the T-3485 was, and I've fallen down that cliff quite a few times trying to just bait my opponents into stupid. So I'm going to ask the Basoto to fall back now because there clearly could be a 40 TP that's making their way up here and there they are. Are they going to spot me? Yes, they are. A little bit of evasive maneuvers here and we just got to hope that we keep our hit points against the Polish medium that could be using a 90mm gun and have 240 alpha damage. And oh, come on, Arty. Okay, well, at least now I know where the Arty is. And it looks like maybe the T-3485M who's crossed the valley now to get away from the pressure of the two tier six tanks above them Manages to get some great shots there into the Polish medium. Now reducing the Polish medium to uh, probably a, a one or a two shot. 
and I'm gonna go in and hopefully secure some frags here. We're still down by a tank. We're still down by 700 hit points. These are the kind of games of Wilder Tanks I love, where I'm not playing OP tanks, where I'm playing on my free-to-play account, and it's just our movement, our awareness, and using all of our knowledge to be able to make plays, and it's not the tank that's carrying me here. Oh, that was close. Luckily, some evasive maneuvers means that Sugar Free, playing the GW Panther on the enemy team, didn't render me down to fat there, pretty much. All right, so unfortunately for us, the Pesoto's getting caught by the T-3485. I can't afford to get spotted because one or two shots from the T-3485 could prove fatal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get up on the hill. I'm going to try and get into a position where I can activate my binoculars and hopefully be able to snipe out against this T-3485. The T-3485M on my team is doing really good with communicating here, saying I'm going for RT in caps. Um, hopefully they're going to be able to find them. And let's just keep calm, aim here, and then hopefully we'll catch this T-3485 as they come around the corner. And in this scenario, I... Whoa! Okay, freebie on a Basoto. Sit still, camera rating will remain higher in that situation. And because it's an Italian tank destroyer, not all of them are using coated optics. Most will be using binoculars in that scenario. And so when they're moving, they're very vulnerable to getting sniped at long range without managing to spot me. So we're now up to five kills with Izakis on our team also at four kills. We are hard carrying this game. However, we're still down on hit points by double and there's a couple of vehicles that we have to deal with. There's that T-3485 who, if, if they fire HE at me, can actually finish me off in a single shot. Not a lot of people realize, but the high explosive rounds on the Soviet mid-tier 85mm guns are truly deadly. So I'm trying to fire there at the GW Panther that was spotted. Doesn't look like I'm able to hit them, however, as the hit points on the enemy team didn't go down. But then again, I was outside the render distance, so I wouldn't have known. Still got to go for it anyway, see if I can be able to hit that GW Panther and hopefully give the T-3485M on my team, Izakis, every kind of an advantage. Okay, so I decide that it's better if we double team the GW Panther because Izakis is actually now down to a very small amount of hit points. And it looks like that GW Panther actually got hit by something. Whether it was me or whether it was Izakis remains to be seen. But I'm just hoping that we can manage to catch this T-3485. We actually looks like we managed to track him in all oh, beautiful days. So if I stay here behind the trees, they won't be able to see me. And well, we can see that the T-3485 is trying to blind fire me in this scenario. They are under so much pressure that they get shut down. And oh my word, was it actually me who hit the GW Panther there? We'll have to take a look in the post-game stats. It possibly was, because he's lost pretty much the same amount of hit points as the alpha damage on my gun. Although it could have been anyone, even an artillery splash. Okay, so in this scenario, I was just hoping that Izakis on my team wasn't going to be too aggressive against the GW Panther. Because if they leave me alone in a one versus one, uh, it could get really ugly against a very flexible top tier German self-propelled gun. GW Panther has, as I said, uh, a very flexible gun because it has a turret on it, which can make it deadly in close quarters combat situations because it can combine the track traverse with the turret traverse, which can be really bad. And then of course, I ask the awkward question, uh, who wants to go first? XD, uh, well, not me with my 55 HP. And to be fair, he's right. He's right, uh, I should go in and I, uh, yeah, I, I know that they're going to finish them off. So in this scenario, as long as we don't go near each other, we won't both get splashed and some kind of nightmare will happen. So I'm hopefully going to turn left here away so that they don't manage to splash both of us. And there we go. Bish, bash, bosh. Job done. And I decide to cross barrels and salute each other with the uh, T-3485M on my team in the form of Izakis. And this was just a cracking game. This was everything that I love about the free-to-play account. Not even the top engine on this vehicle. My crew was fairly good, but not incredible by any means. And playing tanks that not really too many people have talked about for many years since they removed the autoloader off this vehicle and managing to come together to kill pretty much about 70% of the enemy team with fellow mid-tier gamers. That's what the free-to-play is about. And this was an absolute wonderful, beautiful game. And hopefully this shows you that no matter how much emotional pressure your team might put on you to say, go and scout, go and scout, new light, go spot. If you know that you're in a position that is either effective right now or is about to be effective or you're locking down vision or you, you're really confident in yourself that you aren't being too passive, just, just let them be, let them, let them 
flap their lips, okay? Let them flap their lips. Keep calm, get the vision, and then hopefully be able to carry the late game where light tanks become incredibly dangerous because the fewer vehicles there are on the battlefield, the more opportunities that you have to be able to use your mobility to make those flanking plays, as well as set up lines of vision and create those opportunities for your team. So an ace tanker here for the 5916 for our 1450 base experience and while I managed to pick up seven kills in this game which gave me a top gun and we defended the cap circle multiple times I thought I was the hero of this battle but I got ratioed by Izakis 2004 and their 4600 damage dealt literally three times what I dealt in this battle in their T3485M and they got 1938 base experience although come on it's a tier 6 Soviet premium medium tank right probably one of the best tier for tier in the game I'd say in the form of the T3485M but look I'm not trying to detract this was definitely some team play here we get the vision you do the shooting. That's what that vehicle is great for. And Izakis, it was a pleasure to play with you at the end of this game and take down 11 kills between us. And if only you hadn't been platoon uh, platooning with uh, Captain Flappy Lips here uh, and their noob scout. I know they were probably knew me and they were probably all memeing in the chat and whatnot. Then I might have invited you and we could have got a Brothers in Arms medal there and nearly even the crucial contribution. And while we did fire some gold rounds here, we would have made a profit with or without a premium account. True, free to play stuff. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, later on today, there will be a tech tree showcase for the Progetto 65, which is currently top of the tree. And so why not come along right now and I'll show you the entirety of the Italian medium tank branch, culminating with the original auto reloader in world of tanks to see if it's still good in 2022 so really looking forward to seeing you all live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon